Hey everybody, the long shot signatures here. This is episode 78 of my 2023 TTM returns. I have five successes to start off this week to share with you all. First one we're going to do is a hero card uh, success. I did send to a team, only got back one of the drivers, but did receive, uh, I think it's five or six hero cards, and uh, two of them were signed. So this is coming back from Spire Motorsports in 98 days. Got two signed hero cards of Corey LaJoy. These are the two that were autographed. And I did get some other ones. I think these are from like years prior because he's got the shorter hair that are unsigned. But uh, potentially go to a race later this year. Could get those signed or, uh, you know, TTM down the road. Uh, their other driver on the team is Ty Dillon. Um, he hasn't had too great of a season this year. Doesn't seem to do as much TTM as he used to, uh, at least from what I've seen. Um, so that kind of stinks not being able to get him in this one. But uh, still worth a shot and some very nice looking hero cards from the team. Sticking with the racing theme, we have an NHRA success. This is a 3 of 2 return in 77 days from Drag Racing Hall of Fame member Gary Beck. Beck was a uh, longtime top fuel driver. He also won the top fuel championship twice, I think in like 74 and 83, if I remember correctly. I could totally be getting that wrong. Uh, yeah, 74 and 83. He also won the U.S. Nationals uh, three times in the top fuel division, including in his uh, professional uh, major debut uh, in NHRA drag racing. He had been racing for a while, but his first run in top fuel was at the U.S. Nationals, and he would win that year. He also included a signed postcard of him, uh, which is of him when he was with Larry Minor Racing. I just sent out to Larry Minor. Um, so if I get that back, I might consider getting this uh, signed as well. But very cool to get him. I honestly didn't even realize he was still alive. Uh, but someone else on Star, uh, Star Tiger found him, so definitely had to send to him. Very cool to add that to the collection. Then we have a former NFL and college football head coach. Probably one of the worst records I've ever seen for a uh, former head coach. And unfortunately, a little bit of controversy involved with this guy as well. But he's part of football history, so I wanted to add him to the collection. So this is a two of two success coming back in 21 days. Uh, he is also from Indiana, currently residing uh, not too far from where I live. This is coming back from Rick Venturini. So he was uh, never a head coach um, by default. He was uh, an interim coach twice, once for the Indianapolis Colts, I think in 1991, and then another time for the New Orleans Saints. Uh, obviously taking over for teams that had let go of the uh, original head coach. So in the NFL, he had a 2-17 and 17 record. These were teams that were so bad that they were getting rid of their coaches early in the season. But he was also a college football head coach where things were not that much better, if you could even call them better at all. Um, but he was a three-year head coach at the uh, University of Northwestern, uh, you know, Big Ten and everything like that and had a 131-1 head coaching record. I don't know if losing to him or tying with him would be, you know, more embarrassing. And you guys might be wondering why I'm kind of talking so low about a guy who uh, I got an autograph back from, and I'm very happy to get it. But uh, with a little bit of further research, um, he was dismissed from Northwestern University, not because of the performance. They kind of knew that they didn't have a great program. I don't know whether they would have held on to him regardless or not. Uh, but a lot of athletes came out against him, stating that he was uh, unfairly treating uh, a lot of athletes based off of their race and everything like that. Um, so he was investigated and eventually let go. Uh, so, you know, not 100% sure about this guy's character, but still part of football history I do want to you know say both of those things I'm not going to praise the guy you know for how he was as a person and obviously he wasn't that great of a head coach either but he was a good enough coach to remain in the college and football levels for a long time 
think he was even an assistant coach uh, in the CFL. So he did accomplish some things, but, you know, we can't forget about um, things that people did in the past as well that were wrong. Doesn't necessarily mean we have to hold them to that, but we can't just, you know, brush that under the rug. So I wanted to get that out of the way, but very, very happy to get to the return regardless. Next one, I'm going to have a little bit of trouble pronouncing her name, but a very nice return for the tennis collection. This is coming back from the Czech Republic rather quickly. This is a two of two success in 28 days from Katalina Sinyakova, I think. She, uh, like I said, is from the Czech Republic, or at least that's where she's based out of now. Um, she's a pretty decent singles tennis player. But she is really good at the women's doubles, um, having won multiple Grand Slams. And I think she's currently ranked uh, as the number one, um, or I don't know if there's like a tandem that they do for that. But she is uh, considered the number one women's doubles player in the world currently. I think she's won six or seven Grand Slams in the past five years uh, in doubles. Um, she's also done some mixed doubles, had some close finishes there. And again, uh, pretty decent um, singles player, just only three titles to her career, but, uh, pretty cool to get her, especially that quickly coming from halfway across the world. Last one here is another college football return. This is coming back from a former college football quarterback who is currently signed, uh, as an undrafted free agent to a CFL team. This is a three of two success coming back in 261 days from former Clemson, Duke and Appalachian State quarterback Chase Bryce. So Bryce, uh, I think he was actually part of the same quarterback room that a former classmate of mine, Hunter Johnson, was uh, at Clemson. He also included this signed note. I will be right back. Sorry about that. My cat always likes to wait until I'm recording a video to finally get up and start meowing all the time. But uh, like I was saying... Bryce uh, was originally part of Clemson, along with a former uh, classmate of mine in high school, Hunter Johnson. Uh, both of them would go undrafted this year, uh, 2023. Um, Johnson did sign with the, or at least got a tryout with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, I don't know if he's still on the roster anymore, but uh, as far as Bryce, he um, transferred away from Clemson, spent one year at Duke. And while he was the starter for the year, wasn't a great season. So he transferred again with the new transfer porter rules and spent two years at Appalachian State. Uh, put up some really good numbers there. Um, obviously had a much better time there than at the previous two schools. And uh, he was part of some really big upset that happened last year or like a big comeback that almost was. I don't remember exactly uh, what had happened, but uh kept wanting to get him. I did send to him while he was at Duke, never heard back, and this took until after his college career was done, but very, very glad to have him in the autograph collection. So that is it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Helps me out a lot. Best luck with your guys' collecting. Take care.